Ladies and gentlemen, today is May 6, 2014, and this is The Kane Kale Show, episode 183, where we learn to be better artists. I'm your host, Keenan Lafferty, and today is Tutorial Tuesday. Hey. And today we're going to be talking about work and rest, and why you should be joining them in union, so that way it can improve and increase and amplify the awesome work that you put out. Alrighty, and specifically we're going to be talking about some of the work I've been doing for Pauldron, which is an awesome client who allows me to show my work on the stream, or on the show rather. And you can create these <gasps> animated panels in Photoshop. How do you do that? Well, actually, I created a whole other tutorial, which is probably a little outdated because the way you do it in CS6 is a little bit different, but that is not what we're talking about today. Today we're just talking about how I go about laying out these panels and basically how I will take breaks um, during, I basically work for 26 minutes and then I will break for 34 minutes. The rest of the hour I'm actually breaking. And I wanna show you guys what this can do for your process and why it is very important that you guys get onto a similar schedule. Maybe 2634 works for you, maybe it doesn't, I don't know. Maybe you wanna do 1545, 4510, I don't know. Point is, we're gonna be taking a look at some time lapse. And what I've gone ahead and done is I have written down whenever I take a break, whenever I actually go on to a break, I will write down um, a little note there so that you way you know what's going on. And also I wanna talk about just, hopefully I wanna show you guys a little bit of my refinement process, like how I go about creating a panel like this, right? Like how do you like, how do you start? Like where, where do you even get started? Okay, and that's that's a common question that I get a lot, is where do you get started? You just start drawing like that guy's face and then just like branch his body off of his head? No, no, we've talked about that. You don't do that. Rather, what I do is look at the very beginning. Look at how these things start out. That is how that panel started. See, it's just all shapes, very, very thick brush strokes just going through everything. Just shapes, it's like, what, what the heck are these back here? Those are people, those are people, they have feelings, be nice. Uh, these are just shapes and eventually I will turn those into additional people. So let's go ahead and just get started. Let's, let's keep rolling. Roll with the time lapse. And uh, I will tell you what is going through my mind as I go, go through here. Okay, so one of the things, the first thing I'm going to talk about right here is that you'll notice one of the things that I do with the eyes when I'm drawing people that are much smaller is I don't bother with going in and drawing like tiny little eyes, like the, all the details and everything. I actually just put shadow over top of it. And I allow the eyebrows, I allow the brow line and everything to create the expression. See how you can see his eyebrows kind of going up and then his mouth there. I decided to move him to the other side too. This is, um, oh shoot, I totally forgot this guy's name. This is Demas, so this is his friend, but I totally forgot his name. Uh, Demas is part of like this thieves group and they all kind of treat him like trash. So it's similar to like Nico and the Marauders and I like that. However, this guy right here, he's kind of like the big brute of the group, and he actually likes Demas. He's his friend, so he kind of sticks up for him. So uh, Demas, in the previous panel, just got slapped, right? He got slapped by Ful Fulcher. Ful Fulker. <laughs> anyway, so he's getting slapped here because Demas was in charge of getting food for the group. He shot a buck, but ended up, uh, it was on the king's land, so the king paid him for it. But then all Demas comes back with is just these tiny little rabbits. So he gets slapped. And then Adamar, that's his name. Adamar comes and helps him up here. So let's continue with that. Adamar, such a genuine, nice fellow. Thank you. Thank you for being that good guy. So, yeah, but I'm just refining things. I create shapes. Again, I've said this so many times, but the way that I like to do it is I create the shape like, look what I just did with that leg. I think that really captures my my technique right there. I create the shape and then I just kind of erase out uh, of it whatever values or light I want to be on there. So yeah, and then I'm just kind of darkening things. Um, I do the thing where I set the lines up front and then I go behind it and then add in extra values to like darken things. Rule of thumb, I usually like to just make the, the values super dark as the characters come close to you. And as things go back, see, look at the values I'm working with on these characters. Ah, ah, light gray, light gray. And that gives you the illusion that what you are seeing is going back into space. And yes, we, we love that. 
By the way, I do apologize. I, I'm still recovering from a slight sickness. So if my voice sounds a little bit weird or my sinuses sound kind of plugged up, then that is just something you're going to have to deal with. That is the life of the artist. But going back to this, drawing trees. Trees are so fun. Trees used to be super hard for me. I don't know what it was. I was like, it's a tree. How I can draw a person over here. I can draw some hot babe over here, but as soon as I have to draw a tree, I, I struggle. Like I can't draw leaves and branches. Like, come on. But trees are actually pretty, pretty tough. They're pretty tough. But luckily, I studied some good reference, some good tree reference. And really, it was just like the leaves, the how the leaves kind of congregate and kind of bunch up amongst each, you know, amongst themselves. I, like I couldn't figure that out and I make it look weird. It looked too contrived. It looked like a cartoon tree. You know, it was just like the little puff ball. You, you just make it look like a cotton ball jammed on the end of a stick and then you kind of paint it green. That's what my trees look like. So trying to get that to work. So, okay. Oh, break, 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 break. Oh, we missed a break. Okay. So I finished that panel and then I went on break and you know what happens when I go on break? You know what happens when I go on break? I get up and I walk away. Walk away from the computer. Do not come back. Do not look at it. Do not look at anything, okay? You may be tempted. You will be tempted. 30 seconds after you get up and walk away, you'll be like, ooh, you just got this idea. That always happens to me. 30 seconds after I get up and walk away to go, I don't know, make myself some breakfast or a little snack or read a book, I'll get the idea for what I need to go back to it. And What's very important is that you resist this urge. You must resist the urge. And if it's a really good idea, just write it down. Just get yourself a little notepad, right? Write it down, write it down. Hey, that guy's nose is too big. There you go. Then you have something to come back to. But this feeling of getting excited, this feeling of like wanting to get back to work, that is a very, very awesome feeling. And that it, you will have this feeling all day. If you work this plan of 26 and 34, or whatever you decide to divide your hour into, you will have this constant excitement to get back to work and you'll be filled with ideas because you've taken a step back and you've looked at what it is that you are doing. You've, you've basically like realigned your, your strategy. Imagine it as if you were playing some sort of real-time strategy game like StarCraft or whatever. Like. Imagine like you're just one of the units. You are that unit. You're the Marine. You're the Zergling, right? And you're like running around. You're like shooting things or like clawing things. And then imagine how good you'd be able to play that game if you were just that unit, right? But when you can take a step back and see the entire battlefield, this is an interesting analogy, I know. You can step back and see the entire battlefield. Now you can clearly see where you need to go, like what you're trying to accomplish. And then when you come back from that break, you can jump back in with both feet and now you see, look, it's just like everything is working because I knew exactly what I needed this panel to be. I knew, you know, and I'm just following the sketch. I'm following the sketches that were laid down before it. And I can't tell you guys how much of the, the, the final product is captured within the sketch within the first like 20 minutes or no, like the first 26 minutes where I just slap down sketches. I'm just like drawing stuff. It literally looks like a nine year old drew it. Those things, I kid you not, are the things that I'm constantly like, comparing back to. It's like, am I still getting the same emotion that I drew on this face? The same posture, body language, all that stuff. So, highly recommend you guys take a look at this. Like, see, look at this. Look at this. This is where all the skill happens. All of the skill happens right here. And then <laughs> everything afterwards is just refinement. This actually ended up being one of my favorite panels. This is Demas. He gets... He gets invited to a like a like a tournament on the king's land, and he lives in a kingdom. He hails from a kingdom called Camlan, and Demas gets invited to partake in the games. And now he's walking around the fair with like a turkey leg, and the kids are like running around. Woo! Some guys like in the background like selling balloons. I don't know if they had balloons back in that time, but hey, it's fantasy. So there you go. They have press <laughs> figured out pressurized gas cans, and they can they can make helium balloons. But that's another conversation for later. It just looks good, right? You gotta have balloons at a fair. That's just, I don't know what kind of fair wouldn't have balloons. So let me show you guys exactly what I'm talking about. So I jump into Demas right here and I very quickly notice that I'm having some issues. <laughs> Look at that, did you see that right there? That was so bad. Look at that, what is that, freaking Charlie Brown? Come on. So I was like, I just want this guy to look like he's walking. Why is he not walking? So I did something that 
I think everybody should be comfortable with doing every once in a while. Starting over completely. Look at how I just erased this entire thing. Or actually, I erased everything but his torso, and I redrew his arms and his legs. Because it was, I just wasn't capturing that flow. And then I did this. Notice how it was just shapes. And then again, I erased out a couple values. And boom, there you go. Now we're starting to see something. Now that looks much, that looks like a much more relaxed walk. There's a lot more kind of like swagger in it. He looks more relaxed and like, like he's having a good time as opposed to like some weird, I don't know, it was just, I don't know what was wrong with the other one, but it just looked way too stiff. It looks stiff and there was no flow to it. So now as you can see, we're cleaning that up. So, um, yeah, I really like this. And again, look, look what I'm doing with the, the mouth and the eyes. This is kind of like an anime thing to do. I like to do it just because it gets the point across. But again, the eye is just the shadow. It's just the shadow. I didn't draw an eye. Just do the shadow underneath it and then the eyebrow over top of it. And it's communicating the same, the same emotion, 100%. And it's super easy. So I highly recommend you guys do that. So now we're working with the background. And the background was a really fun idea. Okay. But first, we go on break. And I think I put break four with a question mark because I was like, what break am I on? I totally forgot. So I got up and I walked away and I picked up my book. Picked up uh, this book I'm reading, uh, The Anatomy of Peace. Because I am such an angry soul on the inside. My mind is just filled with terrible thoughts and I must obtain peace. No, I'm just kidding. My friend recommended this to me and uh, it is a good book. It's a really good book. Deals with not trying to change everything around you. Probably something we'll be talking about on the next Thoughtful Thursday. So I'm trying to change everything around you and instead make peace with it, allow it to be that way, and then change yourself, right? Change yourself. Make the world a better place by changing yourself. But anyway, so I took a break, read a book, and then immediately I look back at this. I'm like, hey, you know what? This is looking much better and I know exactly what I want to do with this background now. So let's go ahead and get back to it. Back to work separating out the layers so that way we can do some cool parallaxing all that good stuff and just working with values working with values look at what is this these are people these are people i was always like so mind boggled when artists could do stuff like this like how do you draw such a tiny person well you don't you don't draw a tiny you just draw the shape of a person tiny you don't have to draw a tiny ear and a tiny face and a tiny hand you just make shapes silhouettes cutouts of people and it works it works it freaking works and that was always one of the biggest things of the background i was thinking too literal with backgrounds and drawing people i thought i just had to draw everything with the same amount of detail but just smaller but really what happens is as you go further back into the background it just becomes like pieces of i almost think it is like pieces of paper just laid over top of each other little cutouts of shapes see even in the foreground i've made it that way too and then what you get is a really cool effect when you're all done with it, and then you're creating a parallax type of thing. And I'll show you guys that again as we finish this. Yes. So that's me testing out the parallaxes, and then you can see right here what the finished product looks like. Check that out. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Oh, here, let me move this over a little bit. But yeah, I really like this a lot because it's still really rough. But again, it just has a lot to do with creating shapes and then erasing out little, painting in little values. And just being conscious of all your values as they go further back into time and space, they become lighter. They become lighter and just because there's more atmosphere in front of them, there's more light. And I really like doing stuff like this with like the cast shadow coming off the tent. I think that looks really cool and all that good stuff. So now we're gonna move into the final panel of this uh, scary Varg, which is basically like a big werewolf thingy. And Demas is looking at it through the cage. He's like, oh, I know that face from somewhere. I dreamt about it. I've seen it in my dreams. Okay, so let's go ahead and get to that. So I finished that panel, went on another break, break five. So this is hour five into my day. And you know what usually happens at hour five in the day? Usually you start to get really tired really bored, really tired. I remember, yeah, just working all my other jobs. Uh, like you'd get all your stuff done before lunch. After lunch is just kind of like this weird haze of like, okay, 
guess I'll do this. Oh, and then there's a meeting. And then you come back. Okay. Oh, hey, some one of my friends wants to talk to me. Okay. And then we kind of pal around, do that stuff, you know. But not a lot of work would get done after lunch, basically is what I'm trying to say. But what's really cool about doing this, taking breaks, is that you will have the same amount of energy going back into your project as you did right at the beginning of the day, right at the beginning of the day, because you are resting, your body is resting before it gets tired. And you know what's really interesting about that is because you're doing that, even though you're working for 26 minutes and then resting for 34, you're resting more than you're working, you actually get more done. You get more done because your energy is always topped off. It's always topped off every time you come back and get back to work. And that's where the secret lies. I've always wanted to know, I was like, how can you work less than you did before and then get more done? And it really just has to do with, you're not sitting there just droning and just like sitting there like trying to figure things out as you go and like hating it the whole way through. You know, you're, you're not getting angry anymore because every time you get kind of frustrated or something, the, the next break is right around the corner. You got like five minutes till the next break. And you're like, okay. And then you get up and you walk away. And then literally, it always happens to me. 30 seconds later, right? As soon as I get up and walk away, I immediately get the solution that I was looking for. Whatever problem was presenting itself in the piece, it's like, oh, that was it. that's all I had to do. I just had to do, you know, darken the values or do this or kind of clarify the background. That was it. And whereas if I didn't take that break, I would be, I would be like stressing. I'd be like, oh no, oh no, what am I gonna do? Oh, I, I just must suck. I must suck, I must be losing it. I must be losing my skill, you know? And then I go into all this worry stuff and then eventually I kind of figure it out, but it doesn't end up being as good as if I would have just shut up, got up and walked away for a second. It's amazing how that works. So I would highly recommend, what I'm getting at here is that I would highly recommend you guys doing this. Give it a shot for yourselves. And uh, yeah, make some cool little parallax panels in Photoshop, it's really fun. It's really fun. I did do a tutorial on it, but it's kind of outdated because I did it with CS3 and the tools that they had in CS3 for doing these types of things, I think were just, I wouldn't say they were better, but they were different. The way that I taught you to do it was different. I could give you guys another, I can give you guys a good like starting point. And basically what I use is a, a tool called Timeline right here. And if you want to, if you want to learn how to use it, <laughs> like freaking choking over here. If you want to learn how to use it, I would say just, you know, check out tutorials on using Timeline in Photoshop. But they're basically just frames. They're frames, and I basically set the start and end of each of these layers, right? Because these are all just layers. Um, let's see here. Move this. These are all just layers, as you can see. And then I just set, like, the start and end, and then I tween them, which is... A uh, term you should be familiar with if you use anything like flash. Yes. But that might be another conversation for another time. So thank you guys for joining me on YouTube as usual. Thumbs up if you like it, thumbs down if you don't. Don't forget you can get cool Emma stuff. We're about to reach our next goal on Patreon. So if you want one of these, where if you want to get this print right here for the price that you set, you can pledge as little as a dollar and you'll still get this thing when we reach our next goal. Just click that little button right there and you will get awesome stuff. Until next time, you guys take care.